Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining the Ethereum.org November community call. So it's already November and Q4, the last quarter of the year. Today, we want to share some of the things that we've worked on last quarter and what our focus will be until the end of the year. As always, a quick note that this is the ethereum.org community call discussing the website and the ethereum.org roadmap not the ethereum foundation or the ethereum protocol with that out of the way let's take a quick look through the agenda for today first off um Jakob is going to demo the learning quizzes that we've recently launched Next up, Joseph will share how we prepared the website in anticipation for the merge. After that, I'm going to give an overview of the recently revamped EF blog. Pablo will talk about our migration to a new UI library. Nuno is going to share some updates on the design system. Paul will talk about the KZG ceremony and what we're helping out with there. And finally, Joshua will discuss one of our Q4 epics, creating real world case studies. After that, some miscellaneous announcements and updates as always, and some questions that we've been asking you to ask in Slido. Uh, if you haven't yet, sharing this in the chat right now feel free to add your questions there is still some time and unless there's anything else from anyone i guess let's just get into it and start with Jakob talking about learning quizzes take us away Jakob. thank you luca perfect i hope you can hear me all right uh, so in the chat i am sharing links to pages where we have uh, published our learning quizzes. And let me show you as well. So uh, we have shipped recently this new feature quizzes on selected few pages. But our goal really is to uh, have this uh, globally on our website once the content is ready. And for that, you can help us with that. But uh, to present what we have right now, so uh, at the end of few pages that I uh, sent in the chat, you can see that at the end of the article, we, we have now these uh, pieces, which basically uh, will verify your knowledge of the page or article that you just read. So this will be always contextual to um, what is on the page. And it's a fun way to practice your knowledge. Uh, one good thing is that uh, whatever choice you make, we will have most of the time also a custom explanation. So this way we will try to help you understand why perhaps uh, the thing you chose was incorrect. And this way you can just test your knowledge on a few uh, pages and see if you can get all the questions correctly. At the end, you can also share the results on Twitter to promote uh, these quizzes if you want. So we have uh, published, I believe, seven different pages for uh, with the quiz. And in this Discord channel, you will find there is a quiz channel where you can give us any feedback on whether you think these these uh, quiz questions were too easy, too difficult, or whether you think there could be some improvements. Um, we have started with these seven pages, layer two, NFTs, what is Ethereum, what is ETH, etc. But uh, if you wish to contribute, you could help us with uh, creating content for these quizzes on other pages. Uh, again, us in the quizzes channel on discord or you can uh, raise a pr with just the questions and explanations and we'll take it from there and that's basically the quizzes 
Back to you, Luca. Awesome. Thanks, Jakob. Yeah, we're all excited about shipping the quizzes. We received some pretty nice feedback so far, both on what people like and how they could potentially be improved. Um, next up, Joseph and how we've prepared ethereum.org for a successful merge. Hey, thanks, Luca. Yeah, um, incredible that the merge was less than two months ago. <laughs> a lot happened since then. Um, so in advance of the merge, we had a set of objectives to go through the site and just make sure all the content was accurate and that we had sufficient material available that people were well prepared and ready for the actual event to happen. Um, but we also had to be ready because the second the merge happened, a lot of information on ethereum.org would immediately go out of date. Uh, any information on preparing for the merge would be kind of nonsensical and information on how the network comes to consensus would be wrong. Any pages referring to the merge in the future tense or explicitly mentioning the upcoming merge, all of that kind of stuff would all just suddenly be inappropriate the second the merge happens. So we had to have some kind of system where as soon as the merge happened, we could just press a button and update the site to some pre-prepared post-merge state. And the way that we did that was to have a branch of our GitHub repository where we developed a post-merge version of the website in the weeks leading up to the merge, and pretending on that branch like the merge had already happened successfully and auditing and updating the site for, for, for that hypothetical. And uh, we started with an initial site audit and that generated a, a tick list of 59 pages that needed to be updated at the moment of the merge. Uh, some of those were relatively small changes, like swapping tenses and things, but some were complete rewrites and restructures, uh, especially in the developer docs. So uh, I've just put in the chat the link to the issue, if anyone wants to actually see what those 59 pages were. Um, it was actually amazing how deeply the merge touched every part of Ethereum. Uh, the switch from proof of work mining to proof of state based consensus changed everything, um, changed the basic architecture of the nodes and the networking layer um, in the sense that the existing peer to peer network would exchange different information post merge compared to pre merge, and a whole new P2P network would be introduced to exchange information at the consensus layer. And all documentation around the nodes and the clients and the networks had to be updated. Even the blocks changed their structure and their content at the merge and the document, documentation around all that had to be updated too. Um, but then some of the... Okay. Uh, some of the kind of less obvious updates included about uh, block explorers. Um, they showed different information after the merge compared to before. Uh, some of the tutorials were broken by the merge if they included proof of work test nets, for example, or some proof of work specific features. Um, I think overall, the most satisfying page to update by far was the energy consumption page. It was really cool to be able to just click button and watch the website leave behind the old kind of one day we won't burn so much energy rhetoric and actually implement we are a low carbon blockchain. And, you know, since then, a, a third party has estimated the carbon consumption of the entire network to be 0 0.002 terawatts a year, which is lower than even we predicted in advance, which was just a massive win. Uh, it was also kind of cool to incorporate a celebratory front page design on merge day. Uh, we had this merge panda rising up out of the fountain in the decentralized commons image on the home page, uh, just as a kind of small way to let the community know that it was a time to celebrate and that it was a big achievement and that we should all be proud of what, what we did. I posted a picture in the chat <laughs> of what that looked like. Um, so we had that update, and then since then, we've been looking through for gaps. Uh, before the merge and at the merge, it was all about correcting the existing material. Um, since the merge, it's about what new material do we now need to make sure that we properly explain the new proof of stake network for beginners and also for people that really want to know the details of how the protocol works. Um, 
That's all I got to say. Thanks. Back to you, Luca. Yeah, thanks. Um, this was definitely an initiative that a lot of the team were involved in, but especially um, Joseph and Paul with all of their audits and updates did the brunt of the work, so nice work on that. Um, next up, I want to talk about the EF blog that we have recently rebuilt. Um, so yeah, our team has recently worked on rebuilding the EF blog using a more modern stack to add some functionality. The main change on the blog so far is added internationalization support. So visitors can now change the language of the UI and read some of the posts in other languages. Um, this effort mostly included design work by our designers, Nuno and Jakob, to look similar to the previous version of the blog, and dev work by Nico and Paul to rebuild the blog while maintaining feature parity. We've also translated some of the key blog posts that have been published this year, uh, especially the ones related to the merge, given that that is when the blog went live. If you want to learn more about the specific improvements and future plans for the blog, um, we also published a blog post about this a couple of months ago, which goes into some more detail. Let me share this in the chat real quick as well. There you go. Uh, yeah, so currently the blog is available in 15 languages and selecting any of them will change the blog's primary language and only show the posts that are available in that language. As you can see, there's also convenient ways to switch back to English or check out the other blog posts, um, all the, or, or as well as change the language for individual blog posts. Uh, we hope that by continuing to localize this content, it becomes more accessible and reaches more people across the world, regardless of the languages they speak. Uh, and I know a lot of you are already aware of this, but contributors to the translation program can also get involved with this and translate some of the latest blog posts. More information about joining the project and contributing to the blog translations can be found on the website. Just share the link in the chat as well. Um, that should be it on the blog. Just wanted to give a brief summary, um, but feel free to check out the blog post that goes into more detail on this or feel free to reach out if there's any questions or thoughts and moving on to something that ties in very well with this is we wanted to share something else that we've recently added specifically this chart of non-english page views this is a chart showing total page views on ethereum.org over time, uh, non-English page views and the ratio between them. The main reason why we added this to the website was to show the translators how much of an impact their contributions have and how they're helping this content reach more people. And it is definitely true. We can see two clear spikes on this chart of non-English page views on the website. The first one is when we first started translating, um, when we first added translated content to ethereum.org, that is this first spike in 2019. And the second one is when the amount of content we were translating and the amount of translated content we were adding to the website signif significantly increased last summer. And since then, the ratio of non-English page views has gone up for the last 12 months straight and currently over one quarter of all visits to the website are now in languages other than English. This is in large part due to our amazing community of contributors translating all of this content. So a big thank you to all of them, obviously. 
And the reason this ties in well with the blog rebuild is that it clearly shows how much interest there is for multilingual Ethereum content and that the more resources are, that are available in other languages, the more people can actually read and learn about Ethereum and follow along. That would be all from me. But as always, if anyone wants to get involved, feel free to reach out to us either here on this. Um, yeah, that would be it. And next up, we've got Pablo, who is going to be talking about our migration to a new UI library. OK, can you hear me? Hello. Thank you, Luca. Um, let me share the screen. Uh, so yeah, basically, I want to give you a quick uh, update on one of our technical epics, uh, which is the migration uh, of a, and use a UA library in all of our UI components. So um, a brief summary of and goals of this epic is basically we want to uh, create this base layer uh, where we can build uh, and scale uh, better in the future. Uh, so uh, this will serve as one thing uh, to improve uh, to to improve on our upcoming goals that we have for next year. Next year we will want to to implement the our design system, where, which is something that our designers uh, are working on. Nuno and Jacob are leading that that effort. Um, so this chakra migration uh, is going to basically set the grounds to build on uh, that on top of this. Um, so. Jumping into this epic specifically, uh, you can see here all the contributors that we have uh, so far. And I want to thank you all, you guys, uh, for the contributions. Uh, you have been doing an amazing job. Uh, and thank you also for the patience and on the core review from our side. Um, so, um, the current status uh, of this epic is uh, that we are dividing the the work on in two waves. We are migrating all of our U, UI components to Chakra. So currently, we are doing the first wave with cons that consists of around sixty components. You can see the whole list here, and you can see that most of them are already my, have already been migrating, uh, and we are almost uh, finished with this first migration. Um, so I wanted to make a, a small announcement for next week. We are planning to to open the second wave, which will consist on the remaining around 60 more components to migrate. And we hope to finish that in this quarter. Uh, so that is going to be uh, a lot of work, but I, I think we can, we can do it. Um, that is basically all I want to say. Um, just stay tuned on our Discord channels. We have a dedicated channel for the UI migration. Uh, and I also next week when I open, I, I will create a, a new issue. I think because this is kind of a mess. Uh, this this issue has already a hundred comments. I will open a new a new issue and and put the new list there. And I will announce that on on the Discord channels and in this uh, GitHub issue. So stay tuned. And if you want to get involved in this, uh, of course you can jump into this this issue. I will share it in the chat, and you can read the how to contribute section, or you can just ping me on Discord or here leave a comment in, in this issue, and and I and I will help you. So that's all. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you, Pablo, for sharing that and leading this epic.
And also thank you to anyone who has gotten involved and helped with the migration. Um, it's definitely been a, a bunch of work, but making some really nice progress. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, let's move on to Nuno, who is going to give us an update on the design system. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me okay? So, yes, uh, perfectly. So on, this is a perfect segue after Pablo because he's doing the groundwork to implement the design system. So I will try to do a small overview of what we have been done and what's next to come. But the overall uh, goal is to build on top of Chakra UI new uh, components and um, new design approach to some of the components, improving the experience, the, the styling of the website, make everything more concise, more close to what we want to be an experience. So a small TLDR of uh, the design system, it uh, creates a, a framework for open design to open to all of you to contribute better, to get more contributions from the from the community, to the design, to the content, to the development, to so everything. We believe that this is uh, one big improvement to do uh, in the project. And um, having this in mind, uh, we have been working on design systems since uh, quarter two this year. We have been uh, following a lot of different steps to have everything ready to start coding beginning next year. So uh, when, once the UI library Epic will have all the components already on Chakra, we can start implement the new styling, the new changes uh, that we are uh, currently working on on the design system and have everything ready um, to be uh, phased uh, and implement throughout the next year. So this is uh, roughly what we have been accomplished um, on this quarter. We are trying. We are working on on more content-wise, like the markdown pages. What can we improve on the markdown pages? We have already have the basic layout and the and the basic components. Like we've changed the fonts, we've uh, improved the color system, we've improved the spacing, and a lot of different uh, design components uh, will be uh, worked on and based on this design system. So I will just go over really, really, really quickly in some of the details of to so for you guys have an idea of what we are, uh, what does a design system look like and what, what, uh, what is the, the outcome of the design system by itself. So here it's the drill down of the mm -hmm. navigation from the Figma file, which is based on foundations, based components composed components and the layouts. We have been working top down on all of those. Um, and this is just screenshots from, from the design system itself, just for you guys to have an idea. Like this is the new um, typography, typefaces and um, font sizes that we will implement. This is the colors. Uh, we have updated the colors the, a little bit from what we have right now and have everything ready with rules, how to use them, where to use them. Um, the, all the illustrations will be kept on the website. That's another epic. We will uh, try to improve those and have new, new illustrations on the website next year. So something to stay tuned to. And this is an example of how the buttons look on the design system. So we have all the states, we have all the buttons close to one big one base component. We're now at ethereum.org, there's a lot of different sizes of buttons. Uh, we want to make that um, a small size or a regular size. So we need to make that more consistent throughout the, the website. That's one of the goals. This is an example of how the heroes look like, the different heroes mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on the on the Ethereum, on the design system that will be implemented uh, next year, the layouts uh, and Mostly, uh, this is a work in progress. Uh, for the beginning of next year, for sure, we will need uh, your help uh, and try to onboard as many designers as we can uh, to the process and help bring all the components that exist on the website and it is on, on, on Chakra right now to the design system, improve them, and then have them coded uh, after that. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to bring, uh, just we have the, the design system published on, on the Figma. Uh, community if you want to just say uh, like or just download and share it but uh, i want to talk more about the design system so i will schedule um, another call just on the design system itself for the 24th of november in a couple of weeks uh because uh, we, there's a lot of things that i wanted to talk about and hey, collect your feedback and i think a call should help a lot um 
And that being said, it's everything I have for you guys now. I will post the link for the, the um, for the file itself uh, on the comments if you want to just follow and just make some comments, whatever you think, suggestions. Nicole, thank you so much for your attention. Luca? Yeah, thanks, Nuno. Um, as Nuno mentioned, if you're a designer or interested in contributing, feel free to hit, hit us up in the design channel or reach out to Nuno or Jakob and definitely do check out that design system community call. Moving on, we have Paul who will be talking about a new commitment for our team. Um, how, what we'll be working on, um, how will we be helping out the KZG ceremony? Paul. Yes, thanks Luca. How's everyone doing? Um, so this is a little bit of a different role for some of the folks on our team. Um, one of the other things we do beyond just the ethereum.org website, we do help out with a lot of the other subdomains to ethereum.org as well as just other products uh, amongst the Ethereum Foundation and in this space. This is one of those examples where some folks have been working on the KZG commitment ceremony. And what that is, we'll get into, but we've uh, been trying to help out a little bit with, with some of their needs to try to get this rolled out uh, within the next month or so, basically. Uh, and what this is, is the next phase of the Ethereum roadmap and the upgrade plans. Uh, some people have probably heard of EIP 4844 or proto dank sharding, which is. The next planned upgrade as far as scalability is concerned, which is designed to help rollups have more affordable ways to store the data that they use um, in a way that can be scaled. Part of this involves basically the generation of a secret, a shared secret amongst the entire community, something that can be used to generate fraud proofs to make these things function appropriately. And Josh just dropped an excellent li link to learn more about this, eip4844.com. Um, I would encourage people who are curious to, to learn more about it to check that out. Uh, we've been working on a page which was actually originally demoed at uh, DevCon in Bogota last month. And I'm not sure if you can see my screen, but this is the website here, ceremony.ethereum.org. This is the, the test website at the time. Uh, you're free to check this out if you want. Uh, but we've been working with them to try to help improve this for things like, like accessibility making sure that it's accessible even on mobile uh to be determined if we'll be able to actually run the ceremony on mobile and actually participate through mobile but we do want to at least have the information available for folks uh, if they come to the site we've tried to make it more responsive we working with them to help uh, with the translations as well you'll notice here there is a, a changer to switch the language to spanish um, we plan on getting all of this text translated into more languages um, and this is going to be rolled out, like I said, within the next month or so. It's going to be opened up, and the goal with this is to be completely public, uh, something that anyone can participate in. So we're doing our best to try to make this simplified, easy to walk through. You know, we're trying to clear any bugs that we encounter, uh, so more and more people can participate th in this. And what this is is basically this big shared secret that's going to help uh, enable things like fraud proofs to be generated. And it's set up in a way where anyone can participate and it will automatically destroy like your portion of the randomness that's contributed to this big shared secret. And really, if any one person actually just does not hold on to their secret portion, then the whole thing will be a success. Basically, the way the way this works is in a way where as long as one person is honest and destroys their portion of what's called the entropy, the randomness that's contributed to this thing, then it cannot be reproduced by somebody on the side. And what that would lead to is somebody basically able to defraud these proofs and approve anything that they wanted. And the whole goal of this is to make that so it's absolutely impossible. Um, and I think we're on a very good track here and I'm looking forward to the rest of this getting rolled out. This is less something that's been super open to the community, but it is something our team's been contributing to, and we just wanted to let you know about it. Thank you, Paul. More exciting upgrades coming up in the pipeline. Always nice to hear. And finally, for 
what will be the last presentation from our team, Joshua will discuss our Q4 epic on creating real-world case studies. Joshua, please. Hey, everyone. Um, just before I do that, we have created a POAP for this call. So surprise, I guess, uh, if you're interested in POAP. I am sharing my screen just now. Um, we are like, we've got a good bit of time left, so I'll leave this for maybe a minute or two, and then I can get to chatting to everyone about real world case studies, which I'm very excited to do so. Uh, just a note that this QR code, um, it does refresh every couple of pull-ups that are issued. So some people reported that they'll scan it and it won't work. Um, if that happens, just do it again and it should work the second time. I'll also just add, please scan the code right now if you can but as josh gets into his part um after he's done we're going to be showing the qr code again in case some of you can't claim it right now or just aren't fast enough back to you josh yeah hey everyone again yeah, I'm, I'm too busy getting my pull up. So, yeah, I don't actually have anything visual to show for this. So I'll leave the pull up QR code open as I ramble on a little bit about our case studies. And hopefully I'll, uh, I'll do my best to try and explain why we think it's important. So real world case studies, what does that even mean? I think the maybe the best way to explain case studies is first to take a little step back. In Q2, Jakob, who earlier on in this call demoed our learning quizzes, uh, ran an epic focused on how we could get better user feedback. After executing on that epic, we got a ton of feedback. And from that feedback, we've seen two main overarching themes, uh, one of which was that many of the users on Ethereum.org wanted more instructional based content like non-technical tutorials and step-by-step -step guides on how to navigate different tools, concepts, software, uh, all within the Ethereum ecosystem. And from that, we prioritized the tutorials revamp that we are working on in Q4. Um, we're not going to be covering that on this call, but I'll share our Q4 roadmap po post if you'd like to learn more. And if someone could post that in the chat, that'd be great. <coughs> Um, the second major theme that emerged from the user feedback was that users, particularly ones newer to the space, but definitely not limited to just them, uh, they were struggling to understand what the real world benefits of the use cases of Ethereum were. So they understood that they could join or create a DAO, but without any experience in DAOs, they didn't really see how this sort of structure could lend itself to something novel or innovative. Or they understood that they could use stable coins and non-custodial wallets instead of traditional banks. Um, but being from a relatively wealthy developed country, they didn't really see the point in that. The, the truth of it is, is that like the blockchain industry as a whole hasn't done a fantastic job at communicating these ideas or these benefits. There it is. A lot of prerequisite knowledge that we assume that people need to really get why blockchain is important. Uh, and then we're baffled when the people we talk to don't really understand why we think it is so important. It's because in the first place, we're not really communicating the ideas behind the values. Uh, so obviously, if you're on this call, you're probably already one of the converted. Uh, but I don't think we should assume that the people we speak with have the same understanding the same knowledge or even the same worldview as people in this industry do. Uh, so instead, and in the ideas that 
kind of formed this epic is that we want to be able to communicate these ideas better in a clear, non-biased way, uh, with non-biased language and language that actually resonates with people. So it was this line of thinking that led the Ethereum.org team to prioritize an epic around creating real-world case studies. And the final solution that we've came up with, at least for Q4 to begin with, is, is quite simple. So in this epic, we will pick a particular Ethereum use case. We'll research where that particular use case has been used to solve real world problems. Um, from that, we'll identify the most impactful instances of problems being solved. And then we'll write case studies providing all of the context of the problem itself and how Ethereum was used to help solve that. So that's quite abstract, but to give a very concrete example, um, an Ethereum use case might be the use of stable coins. And our research might lead us to how stable coins are used to fight hyperinflation in developing countries. From that, um, an impactful case might be like Argentinians using stable coins to save money instead of it disappearing to the Argentinian pesos 50 odd percent inflation rate. Uh, and writing that case study would probably involve setting the context on how Argentina's government implemented a ban on buying US dollars, leading people to using cryptocurrencies as a way to sidestep that ban. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it so far. I'm really excited about this epic. Uh, selfishly, I think it'll help me communicate to like non crypto pill people, friends, family as to why this stuff actually matters. Uh, and I guess we're hoping that it will do the same for crypto skeptics, crypto novices, and even people who have maybe been in this space a while, but have lost sight of the, the forest for the trees. So that's pretty much all I've got. Um, if you've got thoughts, we've created a case studies channel in Discord that you can check out and ask questions. Or if you feel more comfortable doing so, you can ping me directly. Uh, I'm always happy to chat on this sort of stuff. With that, I'll hand it back over to Luca to close us out. And thanks very much for listening. Thank you, Joshua. Yeah, so moving on to the final, final part, really, which is some miscellaneous announcements and call outs. Um, one that was already mentioned, specifically Nuno organizing a design design system community call on exactly in exactly two weeks from today uh stay tuned for that there's going to be an event that you're going to be able to share your interest in and get pinged before it starts on our discord so if you're interested in that please do check it out Another one is office hours. So a while ago, we did a, a couple of office hours sessions on miscellaneous topics that were either very much relevant at the time or things we were getting a lot of questions about and just wanted to clarify further and help out that way. So Paul is planning on holding another office hours, most likely next Friday. Um, similar to the design, there's going to be an event created in our Discord. There's going to be a topic and an exact time. So stay tuned for that as well. And finally, feel free to check out the learning quizzes. Uh, Jakob and Josh have both shared links to the pages that are doing quizzes at this moment. So please do check them out and let us know what you think. Let us know what you like. Let us know how we can improve them, I guess. Feedback is always appreciated, so don't hesitate to reach out and share it with us. And moving on to the last part, which is questions from the community. Um, we've been sharing this Slido around for a while, asking for questions that 
people would like answered. Yeah, Paul just shared a link to the Slido in the chat. I'm also sharing my screen just in case. But yeah, let's, we have some time. Let's work through some of these. And the first one is, sorry, go ahead. I'll see if you can help here too. Yeah, exactly. I'll be like calling out um, whenever uh, someone is better equipped to answer a question than I am, which the first one is the quiz was real fun, adding more soon. So, Jakob, Josh. Yeah, I can take this one. Uh, but Jakob, feel free to weigh in if I miss anything. So that is the plan. Um, I guess we wanted to start off originally with eight pages because we wanted to firstly see how much impact it had. Um, were people using the quizzes? Was the design we originally came up with the best solution for this? Um, and we haven't done like a deep dive or a deep retrospective into it yet, but our suspicion at this point is yes, that people are finding these useful and impactful. Um, so the plan is probably to revisit this early next year um, with the goal of potentially having an entire hub that's dedicated to all of the quizzes on our, our site. Currently, you have to go to an individual page, take the quiz, and then that's just the end of that experience. So. The idea is to consolidate all of that around one page where all of the quizzes throughout the site can also live in this one hub page. So if you just want to go on and just test your knowledge on one place, you can do that. Um, and along with that, we also hope to open this more up to the community. Um, it's very straightforward to write a lot of these questions. So we hope that we can get community support around this and get people to actually write answers and explanations for us to help us grow this a lot more quickly and make more of an impact with it. Yeah, Jakob, anything you'd like to add to that as well? No, uh, I think there's covered it. Cool. So yeah, the, the TLDR, likely yes. Second question is, is there anyone at ETH working closely with the leg regulators? work out the vital policies and controls again this is the ethereum.org community call so focused on ethereum.org the website um my two cents on this would be ethereum is a permissionless technology that anyone can contribute to build on or use there are hundreds of organizations initiatives companies in the ethereum ecosystem some of them are definitely working on advocacy efforts like Coin Center and the Blockchain Association and similar ones. So the answer is probably yes. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything there. I think you covered it pretty well. I do think, you know, an important note there to reiterate is working or anyone at ETH working closely with the regulators. So at ETH, I mean, Ethereum is a network, it's permissionless, it's public, it's open. There's also then the Ethereum Foundation. Um, I'm sure there are some folks there, but honestly, don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. And there's we're a subset of the Ethereum Foundation funded by them to work on this site specifically, just to try to help clarify some of that. So on our team, no. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone uh, lobbying Congress. Yeah, exactly. Um, any other input? I think we can, we're good to move on. Um, has the bear market had any effect on your community? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to like, I think probably yes, though the community is very much still active and vibrant. Um, people contributing to ethereum.org are likely more focused on getting involved and making an impact versus short-term price speculation. If you're just speculating on a price, you don't need to contribute your time and effort. Um, so those who got involved for those reasons are definitely still here. Not sure if yeah. anyone has any, uh, anything else to add. 
Yeah, I think the community has been pretty strong lately, to be honest, despite the bear market. I agree that, you know, there's a lot of people who are who are going to be around during price pumps and bullishness and they're going to get excited. But this is not the first time this has happened. Prices drop. People who were there for that specific reason start to lose interest. But the folks that are here to build and contribute, I, I haven't seen much of a drop off. I think we've been doing great. Yeah, I think that's um, we... sorry, go ahead. Now we should just point that out that we we do see on visits some impact. Yeah, um, I took this question from the perspective of like our community, as in the people who help contribute to Ethereum.org in any way. Um, and and yeah, like when the market's down, the I number would, of I don't have exact numbers, so I apologize, but um, I would also say like our contributions have steadily still gone up over the course. Of the last year which you could i guess is the bear market so um there's some ways that we've grown as a community and some ways that we've shrunk but i think it's in a positive way we have far less people just coming into the discord with price speculation and more about contributing to this project or wanting to uh learn about ethereum so i think like in ways this has been a positive effect on the community yeah uh, not sure was, like translation program differences but um as far as like github contributions that's something i can speak to yeah there's different ways to measure the community you talk about the effect on our community one is visits to the website you know engagement in discord etc uh com contributions to the repo um we may you know i think personally it seems to have reduced a lot of the noise um which is why i've kind of been enjoying it lately to be honest yeah i just add one more thing um like just looking at the people who are involved in our Discord, who are involved in translations and on our GitHub, we're finding that it's consolidating a lot more around like a core group of people who have been around for a while. So even looking at the people that are in this call today, uh, like I recognize quite a lot of people here. I've spoke to a lot of people here. I've met a lot of people who are on this call. Um, so it shows that like the people who really care about ethereum and want to be involved are still here and that's the important thing so i appreciate everyone taking the time out of their day to join this call and see what we're up to yeah some good answers there next question is anything i can help with mainly do front end um yes for sure there's a lot of ways to get involved and contribute. I just shared the link to the um, how can I contribute channel on our Discord, which covers a lot of different ways to get involved and to contribute, covers the relevant channels where we discuss contributions, um so yeah always looking for new contributors and people to to add something like um we found that that there's very little limit to how people can add value and help us improve the website or whatever their ultimate goal is so i would say yes always keen for new contributors and more people getting involved with the community yeah, X-Ray, thank you for asking that. Um, I mean, for what it's worth, I started in the same boat. I was looking around, doing front end, trying to figure out how to get involved. Uh, and I landed on this repo a little over two years ago now and started contributing. Posted the link just to our issues board, um, a lot of ways to get involved. Um, what I did back then was I checked out the issues board. I found something that I felt like I could work on and just started tackling it. Um, anyone's free to post on those issues and request to be assigned to help keep things organized. Uh, so yeah, definitely reach out if you have any more questions about it. Yeah, for sure. We're always happy when people reach out and are excited about getting involved and contributing in any way. I think we have time for maybe one last question, which um, <laughs> K 
can the community do something about this useless scam project called Zen Crypto? ETH has been unusable for most folks since that scam was launched. So I, I would say these last couple of days, a lot has been going on in crypto and has led to a lot of on-chain activity. A lot of people are probably withdrawing from exchanges or sending assets to exchanges, closing or rebalancing their positions, swapping tokens, whatever. And with an increase in activity, gas prices go up, which is exactly how it's supposed to work. Um, Ethereum is scaling using rollups where gas fees are low and will continue to get lower as the technology progresses and more people use them. And while layer twos are still in the early stages and still developing and have some trust assumptions associated with them at the moment, most of them already have vibrant ecosystems of dApps and things to do. So if gas prices on the Ethereum layer one are pricing you out of using it, um, I would say be part of the solution and start using layer twos. Does anyone have any other input on this one? Yeah, the only thing I'll add is, can is there anything we can do about it? In short, no. I mean, this is a public, open, permissionless platform. Anyone can release tokens and do what they want with it. There's a fee mechanism in place to make it more expensive when there's insane demand, and it drops back when there's less demand. Uh, a lot of those fees get burned, so the solace you can take in this is that when gas prices go high, well, we're also burning ETH, at, at least. So it kind of gives back a little bit to everyone who holds ETH, at least, and participates in the network. So yeah, we can't get rid of it, but it just takes solace in that we've burned a ton of gas lately, for what it's worth. And moving to L2s, I agree, Luca, is definitely a way to, to start to avoid this stuff. And real quick, it does get into a question I saw lower of when sharding um, soon, TM. That is the thing I mentioned earlier. Proto Dank sharding is the first rollout of that. Um, we're hopefully expecting that Q1, Q2 next year. Uh, the website I mentioned will be up sooner than that to start participating in that ceremony. But sharding is coming. Um, the initial phases of that I would, you know, loosely expect in the first half of next year. Um, to say with that one, I was listening to the All Core Devs call for Shanghai, and it depends if they want to do withdrawals and EIP 4844 in the same release, which would maybe be like midpoint next year, or if they want to do withdrawals first and then EIP 4844, which would put it in the back half. Um, just depends on what they still yeah, Shanghai yeah. to be, really. For sure, yeah. It's not finalized yet, so don't don't like quote me on it necessarily, but it is being worked on. The ceremony is going to be one of the first steps, so that is definitely in the works, and we'll continue to make L2s even cheaper. Um, and another one I see on here, FTX situation, I would strongly suggest checking out the Bankless podcast, and if anyone else sends us any references, they could point people to and can drop them in the chat. And yes, there will be more PoApps in 2023. Yeah, that is one good question um, that we've probably answered, but maybe throw this one Nuno's way of or Jakob. Um, I'm a student designer. How can I help with the design system? I, I would say just stay tuned to the design channel uh, and be on board on the next call on the 24th. We will cover that a little bit more. We still, we still haven't figured out the best way to, to collaborate on the design system, to design the components itself on Figma. Figma, it's open, but it's not that open as GitHub. We still need to figure out. So I think it's a good, a good way to discuss that on, on a call. So everyone that wants to help on the design side, uh, please check uh, the community call uh, on the 24th. Awesome. I guess we are at time. Um, I think we covered a bunch. Um, maybe there's any closing thoughts from the team. Uh, I, I would just like to say thank you for joining the call thank you for being part of the ethereum.org community and contributing to the website and see you soon at the next one gg thanks everyone have a good day Bye. thanks everyone